tower, it's dead. Right. Okay. Like if you let them so set you, up, you prevent them to get to the tower. Right. You just keep the lanes pushed pretty much as hard as you can. Five Three of the four heroes in Alliance have pretty good remaining. methods of pushing the wave, which don't cost pretty much any mana whatsoever. The ensnare keeper, the light combo, is something that we saw ages ago. And if this is a tri lane, the damage is enough to instantly kill any hero. Yes. Like if you get an ensnare with the heal, with the illuminate, dead hero. Remaining. Yeah. And Naga Siren's one of those heroes that is uh, quite mana dependent. So having the recharge station of Chakra Magic is pretty nice. This particularly uh, Naga Dazzle Keeper combo could actually even go offensive trialing if they, they want could, to. Yeah. yeah. So let's see what the response here for Team Doggy. They need a kind of a, a big carry core. And against Doom, it really shuts down the options of what you could actually draft. So The split push later as well. With the Naga split pushing and just song and then recall. Sure, just... yeah. That's annoying. So annoying. I think they definitely need a team fight here, though. I wouldn't be surprised to see Alliance take something like Mag, even. Or you could go for something like a Dragonite and just stick with the tankiness and just have Ten two seconds. or maybe even three relatively strong frontline heroes and just force fights on your own terms Five when you can. Continue remaining. to push waves. Again, having more wave push for Alliance, the better. The farther out you can keep the lanes, the better it's going to be, so you make sure Exorcism isn't ever in your face. The best thing you can do when playing Five against Prophet is to force the fights mm. on your terms Alliance and make her ult defensively. Don't let her get to a tower and then pop it, because that's when Team Dog will start getting an advantage. This is a quite an interesting pick of Klink's. I wonder if he's going to be playing a lot more of Assassin style and just go on things like Dazzle and Naga. But the problem is, whoever you go on, the other person could save... Uh, you can save by popping Grave War Song, so it's tough. Also, Blinding Light is a thing in this game against Clinks. I'm not sure whether I'm feeling this pick. Doggy team seems to have they a lot of... They damage dealer outside of Death Prophet, because the but issue they that they have... Fight, I think. The issue that they have right now is that they only have two ways of stopping a hero from running away. Lasso and Stun from Venge, right? right? So in that time, they have to guaranteed kill somebody. So if that's the case, you need somebody who has that kind of burst damage potential, who's going to get safe lane farm, most likely, I would assume in this case. Mm -hmm. And then you get your Orchid up, you do enough damage to pop heroes like maybe the Dazzle or maybe the Naga Siren if you get lucky, and just go from there. Because if you can turn the fight into an immediate 5v4 with Bat Rider and Clink's damage, and then sure. you get to a tower and ulti with Death Prophet, you can very easily transition that into good map control and tower kills. So. The off way to deal with Bat Rider, the burst damage is nice against Clink's as well as Pass on the pie cat, uh, clinks or just clinks in general. I was hoping for something like that gives you damage and team fight, maybe like a Kunkka, for example. Although, obviously, the clinks is going to give them much better laning, uh, especially in, in the lieu of. Oh, that's a mid dazzle. It's a mid dazzle. Okay. That is a mid dazzle. I'm stoked, man. I haven't seen All a right. mid dazzle before. We, we were just talking about I mean, this I earlier, have, yeah. I have, but not in competitive play. Yeah, mid dazzle against uh, possibly a Death MSS Prophet. Death Prophet. Yeah. In theory, Death, Death Prophet wins that quite easily, right? Just I don't think so. Ability to push the wave? I don't think so. Although, Although it's getting healed. Sh Shadow, Shadow Wave actually has a lower cooldown once you max it out, and if you're mid, you will max it. Yes, like 100%. And, and, and you time. can spam it. You have the yeah. ability to spam it, especially if you get the bottle. Okay, this is, uh, it just got real. It's going to be a war of the pushers, in, pretty much. It's like both heroes can spam the wave very, very well. Um, but Witchcraft? Hmm. Yeah, it does decrease the cooldown, actually. So Crypt Swarm will have a uh, four-second cooldown eventually, and Shadow Wave is six. So I think the slight advantage will go to MSS if he ends up going to middle. I, I think it's, it's more important it comes down to things like roams and, and war checking, or rune checking. And I think having a Chen on your team really Whoa, okay. helps. Help the, what? My mind's that? being blown right now. Loda is going mid. It's, S4 hasn't bought mid items. Safe lane farm. I mean, he Loda... just drew a giant sad face Loda... on the map, and I don't know if he's actually happy with his situation or not. So, so did Loda see RTZ and then just want to do this? I don't know, man. I'm, I'm guessing from that sad face that he wasn't particularly thrilled about this decision. <laughs> but it's just something that S4 has just forced him into. He's like, no. Loda does the draft in there, doesn't he? Yeah, Loda, I don't Loda does the drafting, and, and now is the real in-game captain, <laughs> or the current. I, I'm not sure what's going well, he on. He obviously right has now. faith in himself. Well. I do still think that Alliance's draft is very solid, even if it is mid Naga Siren. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how things go out. And in terms of the laning, PyCat is going to have a fairly easy time against Admiral Bulldog. In fact, I'm not sure how Admiral Bulldog is going to survive in this lane. Like, by himself, PyCat should be able to dominate this lane, and that's going to allow Venge and the Chen to do double the roaming, which, begins. you know, back in the LGD International days, they love to do quite a bit. That SD Chen, man. 
I remember that. Yeah? That was some pretty potent stuff. They had yeah. Luna every game as well, didn't they? Yeah, the double roam is going to be huge if they can manage to secure a couple of kills on uh, the Naga Siren. But I feel like if it was Dazzle mid and safe lane, the Doom could jungle because it's very difficult for those two supports to just rotate all the way across the map you know like sure, obviously yeah. the chen's going to be defensive so i feel like egm still could have farmed but i guess after all s4 is going to be getting gold anyway so it, it is still dazzle getting farm he's just not mid I mean, isn't, isn't it just better to have to naga safe lane though I, I guess you know against a bat rider for example for example you might want to have two range here perhaps I think the bat, maybe they were just ex a little bit confused. Yeah. Or not confused, but they just think the bat could get too much. Okay. In any case, that's that's how the lane's going to break down. And You know what? No, I, I don't even agree with that, man. Because you know, Ensnare is better than Poison exactly. Touch against Bat Rider. Yeah, so I'm really freaking lost. Maybe they just want a lot of experience on Naga. Like, that's got to be it. Level and, six and Naga, you possible. know, he, he's going Mirror Image. He's going Riptide right now. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't know. My, my mind is... In some ways it makes sense, in some ways it doesn't. No, we gotta talk to Loda, or S4, or whoever. Just message him after the game, be yeah. like, dude, what about this? Yeah, they going? switched, they sent EGM to save him for Well, EGM was just eating a creep. That's why he wasn't there. He got a net creep, which is pretty much just like having a Naga Siren in your lane. A little bit worse, actually, than level 1 net, but not by enough to a point where Have I think Have you seen them doing this before? What, doing this kind of a strategy? Yeah. No, I've never seen them do this. First time for me as well. All right, Loda finds himself a regen rune up top. That's probably like the best rune you could ask for. He's not going for to take it yet. He's splitting up his illusion. Is he looking for Chen? Is that kind of it? No, no, Chen, you shall not gank me. Maybe. Oh, Chen's Maybe gonna come around. Maybe he's just illusions. Maybe that's the plan. No, well, no, that's not the plan. Does Loda have that kind of micro skills though? I don't know. It's a living legend though. It's actually really hard to block all those camps fast enough, and the mana cost that you have to use, he would have to pretty much bottle crow to keep his illusions out the whole time. Oh, speaking of camp blocking, Demon coming around here to protect that observer ward that's still blocking camps, and he's you know keeping two supports away. Uh, EGM now back in the lane, he's just farming. This is what you want when you pick your fantasy draft. You want your support player to play carry. Yeah, this is like best case scenario <laughs> actually. What demon? E EGM is gunning for that uh, you know MVP. In fact, S4 is in a little bit of trouble. No, a shadow wave is gonna change a little bit of HP. Demon's gonna back off a little bit. Okay. EGM's now carrying. Okay. I think maybe they're just trolling us and they all change their tags. Maybe that would be so next level. Probably would, because if you don't have the person on your friends list or you're in offline mode, yeah. they would have no way of knowing who was who. Unless, of course, you remembered what their icons are. But they change they those icons too, man. All no have an A, then well. I know, man. Geniuses. All right, looks like uh, Admiral Bulldog did a lot of uh, pulling up top. It's going to guarantee himself a wave in front of the tower. If, if, if there's not much like intelligent things being said, it's because we're all fucking confused. I, at least I am. Okay, production just gave me word. Uh huh. The reason why they switched yes. is because S4 is getting really bad lag on the server. Ah, uh, that makes... I actually think I saw them talking about that earlier because they were asking for, I think Luxembourg was the server, because there was actually lag issues for S4, some routing. Sure. Something wasn't really great for him, so that actually makes a lot more sense. That is actually a big deal in terms of this game. Yeah. Not, not just because he's not going mid. Like, for Dazzle, you need to grave, like, on, on time. So if he has a lag spike when somebody's getting focused, uh oh. So they're gonna be a okay. Demon trying to do a little bit of experience stealing. He, he does and finds out if it's rune. Cheeky bastard. Okay. So this I, is what Demon does, man. I, I, I guess you know. No easy look. I guess Lotus, the sad face on the mid lane, is like, well, I, I can't. I never practiced this. I'm not sure if I could play this, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. He's not doing that bad. I mean, he's only a little bit behind in terms of CS compared to MSS who for most intents and purposes should be winning the lane anyway. Yes. I mean it's it's a pretty pretty big mismatch okay. honestly. Okay, hold up. So something just crazy happened. Fog picked up a medallion of purge. We are four minutes in. Roshan are we time. seeing early Roshan possibly with the first exorcism? Are we just gonna gank a Naga Siren and take away her seven base armor? Cause in most scenarios, having a mech earlier is much, much better, but... They sent home the armor creep as well to heal up, so... Okay. They're gonna have armor and minus, minus armor, armor. and ghosts. 
All right. It's a pretty terrifying combination, to be honest. But they don't have Venjor, which I find a bit strange, because if you're going to go for the early Roche, even one point into Vengeance or is still 12% bonus damage. Yeah. So She's leveling up Wave of Terror instead of uh, Magic Missile, so it, it's seeing more and more. And in fact, it's a TP from Demon going back to the jungle. Do we have that double Radius smoking Top just yet? It could happen right now. I think they had just been stacking for Demon because they want to make sure that he can recover because he hasn't really gotten much to this point. I think they will probably end up smoking here, though. Yep, there yep. they go. Now they have the Medallion Courage. Are they, think the two of them can do Roshan Ooh, or are they yanking? No. Are they, no. Are they smoking into the Roshan? Could be. That's so, that will blow my mind. Holy... They can do it Holy alone, man. Toledo, Jesus Christ. Oh, you know what? He's got a regen creep and an armor creep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> my mind they had, is blown. They had to this have... This is so next level. Okay, they had to have actually tried this. Yeah. For these heroes. Because there's no way you would just do this unless you knew that okay, it would okay. work. Okay, okay. Real fast, though. I think having an extra point of Vengeance Aura instead of Terror is more efficient. Correct? For the damage? Well, I, think it is. I think 12% damage is better Maybe than minus one armor. But again, I think every armor is, what, 6%? 6 or 7, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, know off the top of my head. But I think that Command Aura still would have been better. And I'm not sure they could do it, though. Like, the creeps are dying right now. They're going to have to start no, they can't. They just have to. Because oh, bash! Alliance Rank. doesn't know. So it doesn't matter even if he has to tank it himself. Well, even they will know if Fog gets bashed and die. Yeah, but he's not going to die. I mean, why is the Venge tanking this? Venge has seven base armor. Okay, now, now they're good. having... Dude, right? Run misery! All right, all right, all right. They have Bat coming in. All right, Bat has two base armor. They're maybe. panicking. <laughs> Holy shit, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know, I believe in a man. Only 1,000 HP. Oh, MSS yeah, is, is going down here out. casually. And the thing is, even if he's gone for like a oh, couple of seconds, it doesn't matter. No, Misery! misery. Okay. okay, Demon got the aggro. Right. Okay, they forced the stomp. And now Alliance are like... And Venge got the what? Aegis? Okay, so Venge getting Aegis back in the day made a lot of sense. This is called... Like a really late game Venge because you could swap <clears> and still provide your uh, team with Vengeance Aura. But seven minutes in the game? I don't know. I'm not sure what that's about. Who knows, man. She doesn't even have swap, so <laughs> I don't know how she's going to put herself in a position that's dangerous enough for yeah. where she would actually need the Aegis. You would just want to give it to MSS, right, in all normal circumstances, but okay. Okay, so we, we've talked a lot about mid, we've talked a lot about Dog's off lane and what Demon was doing. We haven't really hit on Bulldog much, but he's already got Arcane Boots, and he's level 6. It's only 7.5 minutes in. Sure, Pycat has been more or less free farming. Up until this oh, point. Oh, they're gonna kill him, right? Yeah, Illuminate they're gonna charge. He's got his uh, death pact on, though. They have to wait for the war off. Oh, perfect oh, timing. Bang, perfect timing. Mana burn. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. How'd the Aki get up there without being seen? I guess they just pushed him. He just away. went, yeah. yeah. Went through the bottom. Man, the Trojan horses are coming out. Nobody Dyer's expects Illuminate coming up from attack. top, but really, the, the story for me is nobody expects a, you know, four minute, five minute Roshan coming out. From Especially when nobody's missing that Radiant could actually do it. Like, okay, you're gonna you're gonna say to yourself, okay, Death Prophet has to be missing. She has to, she's the one that's gonna do Roche with them. But like she's just sitting in the middle and then Roche is dead. It's All like, right. What? Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. I still think that was that was really subtle what Admiral Bulldog did. But as soon as a hero stuns the wave and doesn't get a single CS, you kinda have to be suspicious of that. You know what I mean? It's like you just stunned and it didn't do anything. Previous to that gang, yeah. Time. Previous he to the gang, like he just push. stunned. Okay. He stunned the creeps, and it didn't even get him a creep kill. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, that's like crazy subtle. Radiance top tower is under attack. You'd want to be on the ball to know it's not new, in fairness. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, we're gonna see fog. Uh, I wonder what he's gonna do with this medallion now. They're gonna pick up yet another smoke misery, and perhaps a double roaming will finally start online. But critically, this is where you know Loda is already well past level six. Oh, in mid. fact, they're gonna set up a gank. But there is no. That's not their essential ward. It's MS. It, yeah, yeah, it's it MSS. He so, just got hit by it. Yeah, he's not gonna get ganked by this. Okay, jukes up. Nice entry ward. Keep that Death Prophet safe, man. That's the one thing about that hero is if you become too squishy by being behind, it doesn't matter how good Exorcism is because mm -hmm. you'll just be dead before any re real damage is dealt. So, And who has EGM on their Fantasy League? Because holy I crap, do. they're going to be getting tons of points. Give me how is points, it that I'm baby. the guy who doesn't even have a person playing, but some other people can have their supports transition into a core role and just get like 
ridiculous amounts of points in that spot for them. Well, hopefully uh, we're going to see uh, Fog as well as Misery correct things up because the uh, Smoke Gang is coming on the bot lane. Demon in position with level 6. Oh, he has Blink oh, Dagger? He has, no, no, no. He has Blink Dagger. He doesn't have any points of Flame Break. Oh, he's going to get spotted out. Yeah. Which one does he want to do? Okay, they have yeah, Grave available. Stunned. It's so close. He's actually not going to no. get Grave because of the lasso from Demon. Very well done. Flame Break. Flame Perfectly break. coordinated. Grave's on. I wonder if they'll actually... I don't think they'll dive this, actually. That, that would be okay. they super, super, super dangerous. It's only level one. Yeah. So. But they, they got the mo most important kill. Very, very good job Radiant on Demon not using that lasso. Oh, Ever Bulldog's here, though. Misery's going to get ages, his... though. His got Aegis. Aegis is going to get popped. <laughs> All right. And now <laughs> Everything spells, is according to plan. Yeah, can't they dive this? Spells they need to creep wave. Okay. He's nearly level six as well. All right. They'll back off. That lasso, though. I would have just gone for Doom. I'd be like, oh, we need to kill him. Well, they knew the Dazzle was there because the Firefly gives vision. So as soon as you realize that Dazzle's there and that the Doom will die 100% as long as he doesn't get grave, then it's the easy target to go on. It's just making sure that you make, like, S4 can't do anything. Mm. And maybe he's lagging anyway. Who knows? So checking on Loda's uh, item build so far, he's got himself a drum of endurance and I, I don't think this is part of the RTZ. It is. Is it? It is, yeah. What's he the always, logic behind that? He always goes drums. Um, I think it's just because he wants the illusions to be a bit more tanky. They do benefit from stats. Okay. So he just uses bottle crow and just keeping room control to have illusions out all the time mm -hmm. and farm just your own wood stack creeps, things like that. And plus if you do get ganked, just having a little bit of extra durability, make sure that you don't just die and you're not just rushing a naked radiance with like 800 HP. Okay. And that's going to be especially critical, especially against a Vengeful Spirit Swap, a Flaming Lasso, uh, when he is at the mid lane with nobody protecting him. Speaking of Flaming Lasso, Batrider is already journeying to the top lane, but there's a couple heroes already here as well. Admiral Bulldog being very effective. He's roaming all over the map, got a kill on Pike up top, try to kill on the mid lane, and EGM is going to drop in the Doom. No Doom. And I think that aggressive movement has uh, given something away. I'm behind the tower, man. I want that. There's a Vendetta. Bulldog going for the sun. Actually misses. Demon with a juke. Pops a Firefly. Bulldog didn't even walk into the Firefly to stun him, man. He's no funnick. It's definitely no funnick. Yeah, I, I guess you. with the damage yeah. uh, from Impale missing, they, they weren't going to get that kill, so... Thing is, like, Demon more or less panic Firefly, right? Radiant yeah. Like, he wanted to try to get into Fog. That's why you don't stun first. You just Carapace. Because as long as it's level 2, you guarantee your Impale every single time. Sure. Fair enough. And then that time it looks like there was actually a tower killed mid. So MSS got himself tower kill. What do you go on Death Prophet now? You've got 75 last hits. What's the item you get? A lot of like Yules um, just to stop any kind of incoming damage. The question that I have is, are they going to be dooming him? Because if you get doomed, Yules isn't really that good. It's only really good at positioning because you're really fast. Right. And it's good at, like, chasing. I so. mean, I think use gives you so much. Like, you talked about the movement speed component, which, by the way, works a lot better with things like Facebook and Witchcraft. Ammo Bulldog's coming in. He sees Fog and Fog. Oh, no, he misclicked. He got a skeleton. But they should be able to get the kill regardless. These Centaur is going to stomp their way out of there or just do a little bit of damage. Yeah. Okay. But but Yule Scepter, obviously, the mana region that Death Prophet really needs, the movement speed that she needs. And if they doom her, well, there are things like mech and swaps to keep her alive or keep her you know, uh, staying alive from the Doom. Yeah, there's argument of not getting Yules this game. I don't know, I, I think Yules is still good. Yeah. And even in this match, it's just, like you said, mobility is very key on that hero because you know you're going to be focused pretty heavily. And speaking of focused, we got some, some Pi Cat Orchid right now. Yeah. Could be their time to start trying to push. I think between lasso initiations and having Orchid to stop S4 from graving anybody, that Dog actually have a pretty decent chance at taking some good fights. Yeah, especially when S4 is uh, perhaps not having the best lane this issue. I think this is probably the best time to pick up a Orchid as well when the when the game is a little bit spread out, when not everybody's grouping up just yet. We don't see a five man push coming in from Alliance. Uh, you know, picking off the Naga Siren in the mid lane once or twice would be key. And speaking of pick off, they will find S4 or Ake, whichever one they want. You can taste it's so hard the though. Yeah, here oh, we he go. Goes I mean, the grave, the the grave will be nice, but. Radiance bottom He's tower fine. is yeah. under attack. I was gonna say if, if if the grave comes too late and the silence uh, pops after the grave ends, then you you, you can still get the kill. But Radiance they got a tier one tower out of that, so fallen. not all is lost. I think as long as you grave, 
on the auto attack that would have otherwise killed him. That can actually never happen because okay. he basically has to Orchid straight away to get the maximum bonus damage from the Orchid tick itself. So if you just wait Dyer's until the auto attack that's going to kill attack. him is midair and you grave him then, then the Orchid is going to wear off before the five seconds of grave. So because Orchid only lasts five seconds. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, the good thing about that tower tier one tower push is that MSS did not have to use his ultimate, and now he will be using it for the tier two push. And here we go. Is there going to be a setup? You talked about the illuminate earlier to prevent that crew wave from coming in the tower, but it's already there. MSS is going to tank a little bit of tower shot, dropping steadily very quickly. No glyph available on the line side. I'm surprised that they're not actually like committing more to trying to defend these towers. It's just like attack. he didn't learn his ulti. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't get weave, which attack. I find is a little bit surprising, to be honest. Because even if you're not heavily comprised around physical damage yet, it's still good to have the weave on just for things like exorcism and clinks auto attacking people. Mm -hmm. Remember, we were talking about this in the card, the two levels in shadow poison. Yeah, it, it, it's one extra point for six extra damage on on your spell, two seconds off the cooldown, and 66% slow for one second. I I really just. I think it's one of the least useful points, basically, that you can get on the hero. Comparable to DK, Dragon Tails. Point. Okay. <laughs> I'm not talking like Illidan level yeah, strategies man. here, okay? I'm just, I'm talking like, just normally, I would think that Weave would be better. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Especially in a situation like that, when they're trying to pressure your terror. Usually, like, even the, the fact they have it on it couldn't scare them away. Like. Oh. Doom goes off here on the top lane. MSS is on the run and he's well, so, he's so fast. fast. Drums activated. The phase. Are they gonna chase him down? They impale from long range. They are gonna get him down. So very good play here from Amber Bulldog as well as EGM. Meanwhile, though, if you look at the Roshan pit, it's gonna be from that medallion chen again. Pop your buckler, my friend. Give that centaur a little bit of extra love. He doesn't or need not. that centaur. He's okay. got plenty of them. He's probably gonna send it back. Who do you give the Aegis Ten out? If I can, probably. Yeah, cause yeah. He I think he give it to Demon too, because he's the initiator. I think he'll be putting himself in harm's way quite a bit. Nah, there's gonna be with Pycat. It's, I mean, either one I think would have been fine. But they just want to play it safe, make sure Pycat doesn't, uh, doesn't end up dying. Yeah, now he can actually go aggressive with his newly found... Dyer's middle uh, ...found the Aegis. Oh, Ake. Ake, no! He should die here. He one didn't have hit. Strafe off uh, cooldown. Nah, he's not gonna die. Yeah. Strafe there would have been dead, for sure. But it was like three seconds, I think, before mm -hmm. Strafe would have been up. But you always, should you go with Batrider now to pick people off, like as a little jewel? You can, but it's a lot harder for the Batrider to come with a hero that's otherwise invis. Like, they have a sentry mid, but Alliance don't have sentry coverage anywhere else, so if you want to use the clinks to pressure the opposite side of the map, then he has to pretty much be alone because that kind of a presence doesn't come from a Batrider who can just be seen everywhere. So, I don't know. I, I'm kind of thinking that that hero can't really be used to pressure, though, like Clinks in this case, because he needs to be the one who's fulfilling the one role, which means he needs a lot of farm. So, yeah, he just goes his, his way back top, and I think they're just going to hope to glass cannon people down. Yeah, the unfortunate thing about this is whenever he's farming in lane like, like this, and he needs to, rightfully so, because he is the one. They're losing a lot of map pressure. And right now, MSS is being on his on an island by himself. There is a venture to swap him out of harm's way, but I mean, should you be here is a question. They have a sentry in preparation of any gank. S4 just roams in. I mean, he he should be very careful as well. The other thing we haven't really touched on too much is that once Death Prophet has a level to support a four duration islands that can be really critical against heroes like nyx assassin doombringer keeper of light and dazzle so if uh if mss lands a good one on these team fights it could be very backbreaking for alliance nearly has right uh, the relic up on naga siren as well that'd be pretty big yeah his farm has actually surpassed at least in overall cs what mss had and they were 1v1 but against each other once that radiance comes out they have a really hard time initiating, like a really hard time, especially through Demon. If he micros the illusions well enough and continues to split push lanes too, there's not a whole lot of ways that um, that dog can really deal with that without sending somebody who's 
pretty important back. Like, you can't send the Chen back, and you can't really send the Venge back because they can't defend by themselves. They need one of the three farmed heroes to do it. So I think they're going to start running into some issues. And one of the ways I think they can deal with that is just try to five man. Ooh, looks like PyCat's trying to pick off this courier on the way back. He sees He'll the Sacred Rail like being delivered. Yeah. 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 Meanwhile, no, a little bit of an engagement happening on the bot lane. They do kill a uh, Nyx Assassin, push down a tier 1 tower. Maybe the way of victory is just forget about that relic and just go take a Rax right now. Dyer's structures if they can are fortified. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Loda is actually forced to pop his song in middle lane and retreat. But he almost got the tier 1. It's not in the die range. It's like barely out, actually. It's 1 to 140, yeah. Well, it's under percent of the tower yeah, is HP. Okay. So it'll be uh, 129, I think, is when you can start denying tier 1s. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> once he gets Radiance, things are going to be looking pretty solid for them. I think that's the first time Loda's actually seen another hero this game. Yeah, it's only 3 to 2 in a 20 minute game, so it's not necessarily the most action packed. <laughs> but it's not to say that Team Dog haven't been pressuring because they've taken, up to this point, 3 towers, and they've only lost one. Yeah, and you know, PyCat's roaming around trying to find people he can kill, but really can't find anybody. Like, he, he found the Keeper of Light twice, but you know, Dazzle was always, Dazzle always, was always there, so it's tough. I feel like if, if they don't do much, something very, very soon, I, and it, you know, granted they take down three towers already, I feel like they need to pressure high ground soon, or once the Radiance comes out, like you said. It so annoying. I, I had the opportunity to talk to uh, Zephyr Ayosin recently and ask him what's the most annoying hero that you think exists in Dota 2. He says when played correctly, uh, a Radiance Naga, you know, being he had he had to play against Miracles Naga in the uh, C server. Like it, it That's you can't beat it. Yeah, it, you, you can't beat it. Now I'm not saying Loda has the Miracle Dyer's Micro, but he very well can. Attack. So it's it's just annoying. The whole wave pulling and what you can start doing later when the illusions get tanky, like you get a Manta and a Heart, and the illusions start taking like 5 yeah, to 10 seconds yeah. to kill, just the amount of pressure you can relieve from every single lane with illusions becomes a little bit absurd. So, if it gets to that point, yeah, I would say that uh, Alliance you can win the game on your own. Alright, looks like we're going to see Ake uh, trying to slow down this tower push by himself. But tier 1 tower is going to go down regardless. Again, they did not have to use Exorcism for that, so they could perhaps take down a tier 2 as well. And what were you going to ask, Shane? Do you think they can, like, Lauda could nearly win the game on his own with the uh, Manta and Heart? On his own? No. I don't think he can win on his own. Not versus Death Prophet and Clinks, like those heroes. And let's not forget that if you get Blink Lassoed, you can still very well get popped in that time because you're going to have to worry about silence after the fact, which means unless you already have a Manta, you're not going to be able to song. So. Should they give him a gem with the illusions because they can just send them out to Scout? I don't think Gem works on yes. yes, Gem, Gem operates like a, I think an aura, and okay. your illusions could carry aura. Hmm. But I, I mean, I, I think the ideal way to play playing a Naga like that is your hero is never seen by the enemy, and you just pop illusions and send it in, in lanes. And when they get so tanky, you just run it past the enemy creep wave and make that creep wave chase back to their own you know, right. direction. So. Loda should never been seen, and the fact that he's only been seen once in 20 minutes is a good sign, I guess. More time he has to himself, the better. The crazy thing is actually MSS is getting pretty close to a heart. He's got a Reaver on him right now, mm -hmm. and once he gets that, he'll break the 2,000 health threshold. And he's going to be pretty hard to deal with because if he gets doomed and he already has Exorcism out, it's kind of a waste at that point. I think Crypt Swarm spam is like okay. Yeah, something silences is. I fine. don't really know, like. What target do you really doom? If you doom Clinks, he's still tanky. He only does right-click damage. If you doom Batrider, then there's a good chance he's already lassoed. I feel like there's... Chen? Not really... Yeah, I mean, you could Chen. That's that's pretty much... Well, maybe the best choice, honestly. If yeah. you can catch him before anything. I, I honestly think that the best way for them to fight this is have EGM to pick up a Blink Dagger. Maybe eat a Centaur Creep and just initiate. Like, Blink, Centaur Stomp, Shiva's Guard, and if you get the Doom off on Death Prophet, then that that is a perfect way to start a team fight. If you don't find him, or if he uses ultimate, then you, you know, Doom the Bat, or Doom the Chen. So, what EGM thinks, he, he's got a ton of farm. He's gone Vlad's, he's gone full armor, which is also a very good way to go about it, considering that, again, the physical damage from the, uh, Oh, is Batrider gonna jump? He's trying to oh, he force that. Oh wow, he committed so hard for that. But no reaction at all yeah. from Alliance. They kind of just stood there. They look kind of was like, oh, maybe. you came in? I'm Dyer's gonna just turn on my heel. Is, is the Vengeful Spirit on Lincolns? Mm, I'm not sure what. He's got an orb. 
Okay. He could also Manta. He I could guess? go Lincoln's and put it on MSS. Yeah. He's also got a band of Elven skin, so I'm not sure what that's about. I, I don't know. I'm guessing it's Manta, but I don't know. It, if it's Manta, it would be weird. I actually think Lincoln's is way better. If you put it on PyCat and he pops a uh, strafe or something on a tower, you put it on oh, MSS. Here we go. They're going to use Song. The minus oh, armor is going to come right on. Who are they going to focus? They're going to focus on PyCat. They've seen him. Where's the defensive swap? No swap just yet. He went in Viz. The Shiva Guard is going to come out here from EGM. He's right clicking, but the hand of God as well as Met goes off. Misery on the back line here. He's going to die to Lotus from Radiance Burn, but it doesn't matter because it's Javen. Venge barely TPs out. No, he dies. And that should be an teamfight. Emma Blue up blinks in. The Yule Scepter. PyCat is going to survive. No, the Sandbag not in time here and he's going to be going down as well EGM's on the chase he's got Shiva's guard in seven seconds and that is the end of the fight great fight to take because exorcism just run out they initiated a song I guess that's how they fight okay I'm gonna give misery the benefit of the doubt and say that swap was a misclick because he swapped EGM into using Shiva's on his whole team with Scorched Earth on and there is no way that team is focusing down a doom who has a Shiva's Vlads. and a Vlad's and, and 1500 HP so I'm gonna say he meant to click somebody else. I actually lost them the fight. Like just swapping him into the whole team like that because everybody gets slowed, everybody takes a huge amount of damage. You already have two people on the run and you put Avenge in a horrible position like instantly for no gain. I didn't pick off the clinks there, they would've got nothing like. They just, uh, Armor Bull just caught him on the end there when they were getting away. I, I don't think it's who you pick off, more so it's I think how the pace of the game is going. That should have been a tier 2 tower for Team Dog, instead they didn't get anything and they lost 2 hero. And I feel like Team Dog is in a situation of, if we don't rack soon, we You're lose the game pressure, eventually. Like... So. I think that was a great defense here by Alliance. They're gonna use Exorcism even for Roshan. This is cheese as well actually. Roshan. Is this worth Exorcism for Roche? Well, it's still not long of a cooldown. It's what, like under two minutes still? Yeah, oh, 115 seconds. These radians. Yeah, they know. Yeah. But there's not really much that can be done about it. Man, this is... It's kind of weird when you see a team that's gotten three Roshans and still can't It feels push. like they're losing to me. They are. Yeah. They definitely are. I mean, look at the farm that Loda has now. He's got his Boots of Travel done, 2,700 gold on top of that. Yep. He's pulled massively ahead in terms of the last hits. His net worth is still the highest. He's even higher than a Doom, a safe lane Doom. Didn't have really any contention on any creep wave. Demon was level two at like five to six minutes into the game. I feel like it's slipping away from Dog right now. Yeah. Now, in terms of item choices, uh, if we look at the Doombringer, I think he's going to be going for a Heaven's Halberg, which normally is a great item choice against a Klinks, but Klinks is going to be picking up BKB. And when he is BKB, who else do you have in Halberg? It doesn't seem like there is a good target. Fog dropping some wards on the top lane. And he does have the mech, so he should be fine. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I, I like the Heaven's Halberg, but at the very least, it gives you evasion, which is more survivability. But not that he needs hunt. more. And once you reach a, a certain armor threshold and health, then your effective HP can be boosted more by evasion than anything else. So, yeah. only a good choice. Even if you can't necessarily halberd Pycat in all situations, I think if the hero has an Aegis, the halberd's actually better in a way because most people won't pop their BKB before the Aegis first oh, goes yeah. down. So you, which you means get a that free the first halberd. life, yeah, yeah, the first life is likely to have a full duration halberd. Okay. Yeah, and the rest of the, the team is, you know, itemizing correctly. For example, Ake getting the Heaven Tower work, dealing with that uh, uh, Kling's right click, Dazzle getting, you know, mech for the team. And Admiral Bulldog, haven't looked at him too much. Himself a Blink Dagger. Kind of been quiet this game. Yeah. It's, it's not like he's been playing poorly, it's just most of the focus this game has been on EGM and Loda because they're the two who have basically been eating the entire map. And in that sense, honestly, Team Dog has gotten more on their supports and their offlane than what Alliance have. It just feels so one-sided because Loda is soon to be, like, how do they deal with him? Yeah, what yep. do you do now? What's the game plan for Dog? Like, you need to kill Loda, do you? Or do you just push? What's, what, what do you do? I think if people knew, they would actually win against this hero. Well, the thing is, I, I find that the way that Loda's playing right now, he's constantly out there and constantly, like, in the creep wave, for example. So, uh, sending a, a, a smoke gang party, a bat rider and whatnot is a, is a way to start. And you can see that PyCat's constantly looking for him, but he, he's always on the opposite side of the map. I think it always starts with killing the Naga, killing the Loda, and can then I'm gonna go to work. solo kill him? No, no. not even close. And pretty soon he's gonna have Manta to dispel the Meanwhile, Admiral Bulldog solo killing other people. Got himself a kill. 
of a Radiance uh, Naga. That's that's problem. When Ammo Bulldog you kill, pick off your Chen. The Chen Creeps are gonna die too. Yeah. No. Uh, you got one. And the most important one as well. I love my trolls when I play Chen. They're so good. Yeah, so Venge is going for Mantis out. I, I actually think this is like. Lincoln's is nice in terms of protecting Crobulus, but I honestly Dyer's think Team Dog needs more damage. Ventral Spirit might not seem like it, but she's a support that could pack a punch. I don't disagree with that. I just think that having a way to stop one of the... Well, it's not one of the only single target spells, but it just gives you that feeling of safety, you know? The buffer to where you can get some extra chip damage on a tower, which at that point, at this point in the game, I think that's what they Dyer's need. Right. I think they need to be able to break the base, and if that's the difference between breaking it, then... I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Dyer's top tower has been denied. Oh, I think we're going to be in, in it for a long haul because Alliance is not going to be doing anything uh, anytime soon because they're going to just be pushing and whatnot. And it seems like Team Dog is uh, stifle on that si their side of the map. So yeah, PyCat is uh, roaming around. He can't even farm the jungle because Naga's taking it up. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, this is what Naga does though. You just consume the entire map, and now that he's got a Manta, I honestly think that Alliance could just go fight them. Like, Aegis and Cheese be damned. Oh, Bulldog looks like he's gonna get picked off, though. Oh, PyCat with the misclicks! No, never mind, it was there a ghost goes, yeah. Oh, then Stair goes off on the oh, mid lane here. PyCat seeing if the Doom goes off, and it will not! No, where's the Doom not just, Nothing he's just yet! Yeah, 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 okay, nicely done. Pick good patience. Meanwhile, Demon's trying to get the kill on the ammo. Bulldog not gonna find it. He's coming back alive, and that's it. No sight. I mean, that was an Aegis for nothing, so still, sure, perfectly fine for Alliance. Wow, that was really weird that he just stopped attacking him. I, I actually couldn't even see that he was ghosted. It was a very dark color, actually, wasn't yeah. it? We need to uh, change Ghost up here to, like, magical Bruno shirt color lights. <laughs> just yeah, like... I mean, BKB turns you freaking bright yeah, yellow. There you go, you know? Ghost up should turn you into, like, light blue or something. I, I miss for uh, Cosmodon or whatever it's called. For one. Cosmodon. Yeah. yeah, and you turn like silver, right? Yeah, yeah and the Aoo. In any case, tier 2 tower. Again, this is where the Keeper of Light Pig is uh, coming into fruition. It's only level 9, which I'm somewhat surprised about, but I guess when Nog is farming your entire map, you don't really have yeah. much uh, place to farm. And not only that, but whenever Ake counter pushes, he's never in range for experience. Because yeah. he has his ult on, he just channels one Illuminate and backs up. So lucky for him, he doesn't really need anything else, like he would mention. So he's even got a Ghost Scepter, so actually can't even kill a level 9 Coddle, which is depressing to think about how that hero is pretty much completely countered by a 1600 gold item. What's with the Quilling Blade on Keeper of Cut holes in trees, man. Yeah. That's, no, how, this legit. that's how he did that, Yeah, it? that's how he got top. A ninja. Yep, these Naga Lutians are doing more damage. I mean, Misery just lost like 40% of his HP. He's chilling over there and he's like, well... I'm gonna have to go to base just from illusions. That is not a good place to be. I wonder to take advantage of the weak ganking uh, lineup. I mean, aside from Ammo Bulldog, uh, from Alliance, is there any way that like Team Dog farms all over the map? We just saw Demon farming in the enemy jungle, which you know arguably is the most dangerous place to farm. Oh. You have somebody farming your own jungle, okay. and try your best to repel the Nog illusions, and just try to outgold them. Pycat, by the way, he's going for it. Going for the kill, but uh, the rest of the team's coming. I like how he doesn't even have his Manta up right now, and he just walked away. Like, he's 483 move speed. All he has to do is walk away from PyCat, who's only 350. So, unless he somehow... Oh, oh, he's got a gem, though. He sees it. <clears throat> okay, that was nice. Admiral Bulldog could have just blinked, though, and stunned him. He still has a lot of people here. I'm actually really surprised they didn't just go for that. But maybe he didn't have any... Oh, he didn't have any detection on him. So, there you go. So you're saying that uh, Alliance could just push now, and it seems like that's what they're doing. A little bit risky in my opinion. Yeah, but think of it this way. Even if Alliance don't necessarily secure anything huge by applying pressure, if MSS ults and Alliance don't get completely slaughtered, then it's still a win because it's time spent sure, where Dog sure. is on their side of the map, and you know that your late game is still going to be better. And you still have your tier 2s up, at least on mid and top, so yeah. you're not going to lose too much structure damage. If you're Alliance, you don't even want the fight, do you? You just want to keep doing this. This well, is you, amazing. That's what is, I thought, yeah. Alliance have more options, though. Like, if they can fight, or if they want to fight, they can. If they don't want to fight, they don't have to. But I feel like Dog has to fight. Otherwise, they're going to get to a stage where it's like, okay, the Naga is actually unkillable. 
Clinks is being forced into buying a BKB, which means that he's going to be more time before he really does the maximum amount of damage that he wants to deal to actually isolate and kill heroes like EGM or what Loader is on. So I, I, I really feel like the later this goes, the worse it's going to be. Ooh, Fog just threw away two, sen uh, two Chen Creeps on the bot lane for no reason, but PyCat knows which one's the real one. He's going to go for it. Drums gets popped. Not even close. With the Reaver, the Manta. Oh, then Stair's gonna come out here. Lola is gonna have Grave, so he's not worried about anything. Pycat, where's the Grave? Oh, it came oh, way too late. Rough. BKB gets activated and Pycat gets out of there. But hey, trading a BKB charge, the 10 second one, no less for, for Grave. Yeah, aligns with that trade. That was too close for comfort, man. That was some serious faith in S4's clicking abilities because he walked right back into the middle of all his illusions. And honestly, if he died, I wouldn't have even blamed S4 because he walked into a place that was very hard to click on. You know, that's what's lagging. There's that too. So. Yeah. He literally waited till the last second. Like, oh my like god. Like balls of steel, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm sweating here. Nearly. I don't, I don't think that's for waited. I think he just like clicked and it was like, wait. He's like, I'm panicking. I'm trying. All, All right, right, I got okay. you. Thank God. Okay, the rune ending game of double damage. Okay, don't pick it up. I think this is where you buy a bottle and you find a Naga and you go for it. He can only kill the Naga if the if Manta's, the Manta's down. down, which he, he did find him with Manta down. He seems to use it a lot to farm. Oh, he's got a heart, never mind. Even with a DD, he can't okay. kill him anymore. That is so sad. Wait, you, there's no way you can kill him. This is a feeling I had this morning when um, I was in the car with Bruno and James and we were going to the Dream League studio. What, oh. feeling sad? Well, I get that way too, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell the story if nothing's happening and no, <laughs> Demon gets blinked, impaled with a carapace. And we're bulldog making them plays, but uh, Demon just just out there. He's got blink. He needs a couple of seconds, and he he'll be fine. Yeah. So I was in the car, and uh, we're arguing about some dumb shit. I don't even remember. It and happens, then, man. And then the car was silent, and I was like, holy shit, some real shit just went down. And then later they kissed and apologized. But before that, I was feeling sad because I was like, what did I say? I don't know. You thought it was your fault. That well, mommy no, and daddy I mean, were fighting. if, if your mommy and daddy are fighting, it's not your fault. You just you just feel bad, right? That's true. Yeah, that's how Pi got felt right now, because he well, damage and he can't kill Naga. GG. Really, like, I'm at a loss because this is a game that's gone 36 minutes with eight kills. <laughs> that has a blink Batrider uh -oh. and a Clinks, and I think Alliance are about to put um, put a lid on it. Where songs go off, who are they gonna go for first? Pycat gets a BKB, immediately gets doomed though, and poor, poor misery just had absolutely no chance. It's gonna be two kills going the way of Alliance, and GG. they just call it GG. Yeah, it is. I, I really <laughs> feel like that was a bit anticlimactic. It is. Like maybe. And yeah, he, he just goes fun game. Yeah, pretty much. It, it wasn't, I would say, two action kills. packed. Two kills, game over. Yeah. This is Naga Siren, right? Uh, is that the perfect game for Naga Siren? And technically, he had a perfect game. I don't think he died, right? I guess we're gonna find out in a second. Yeah, yeah he didn't die. Uh, he hit a lot of creeps, and then he won. <laughs>